Alright guys, now today's video is a bit of a spur of the moment thing. Uh, I've just received a package in the post from Amiga Kit and uh, it's actually a device that will allow me to play MP3 files on a classic Commodore Amiga machine. Now uh, the Amiga's custom hardware is only a 8-bit uh, audio processor and the uh, 68K processor hasn't really got enough horsepower to uh, play MP3 files. You know, these were released before MP3 was really a standard. So uh, with this device, actually, it's called an NAS player or an MAS player. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it. Uh, but they are available for a few different systems, including the Commodore 64. But this will basically slot into my Amiga's parallel port. And uh, it's an MP3 encoder chip that the Amiga can control. And then we can mix that with the Amiga's... Uh, audio hardware circuits so basically we get to play mp3s on the Amiga without too much overheads so we'll do a quick unboxing and then we'll go through the setup and see how well it works okay now uh, this is a parcel I received from Amiga kit this morning amigakit.com actually if you've never checked them out before they are a brilliant company very quick turnaround usually and do uh, lots of products for the classic and next-gen Amiga machines so uh, there you go there's a website on the back there so I've already kind of opened the the parcel we'll have a little look what's inside here so uh, by the looks of it we've got some documentation the hardware and a floppy disk as well so it's everything out of there now just an invoice there uh, now this looks like the mass player with a instruction guide as well so yeah that's, that's how you that's how you spell it mas player i think it's mass player or mas player uh i'm going to call it mass player for the sake of argument so here is the device itself, now if we get it out of this uh, polythene bag here, excuse my blind rattling around in the wind, I'm just going to close that. <laughs> yeah, so here it is then in the uh, polythene bag, we'll just quickly take this out of here and have a look. Right now, um, so this is really it here, uh, now we've got a pass-through port for the, the joystick. And uh, this section here that goes into the uh, parallel port, this connector, and in there is an MP3 decoding chip. And it really is as simple as that, really. So what you do, you uh, plug that into the parallel port on the Amiga. It's got a 9-pin joystick connector here as well. Now, the reason it's got this is that it requires a little bit more juice than you'd get from the parallel port. It needs plus 5 volts to power it. So what you do is you plug this into the joystick port, and then it's got a pass-through adapter there, so you can plug a joystick in as well. Uh, this here plugs into the Amiga's phono ports, and that means that the Amiga's audio hardware can go into here and get mixed. And then, if you look on there, it's actually got a mini jack that can output the, the mixed audio. So it really is as simple as that, really. And we've got a uh, floppy disk here that I presume contains the, uh, the installer and the setup for it. So let's jump onto the Amiga 1200 and set it up. Right, now this is a very awkward angle to try and film at. I hope you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Now we're around the back of the Amiga 1200, so uh, this requires to be plugged into the parallel port, so I've got a printer plugged in at the moment, which will disconnect for now. And I've also got a uh, left and right phono to mini jack adapter for my speakers that go into the, uh, into the monitor, so we'll pull that out. And then it is really a case of just hooking this in to the parallel port there, so that goes in. Then we'll uh, take the audio out of these two ports here. So in the red and in the white one. Then as I mentioned, it needs power from the joystick port. So we'll uh, unplug my zip stick for now and just pop that into there. That will hopefully give it the, the five volts it needs. Uh, and then I'll just take the mini jack from my speakers and pop that into the port on the back here. And then the joystick can plug into there. So, that is pretty much the setup. Um, now we'll try installing the drivers and see if we can get some audio out of it. Right, now I usually use my Amiga 1200 on this 19-inch CRT monitor um, with an Indivision AGA scan doubler. Uh, so it gives a bit of a nicer picture than using it on an LCD, but um, as you can see, it's flickering a bit because of the way CRT works and cameras. They don't really work together all that well. So for uh, doing this video, we'll actually film it off the, uh, the LCD screen, so it'll make it a little bit clearer for you, hopefully. Now, I'll unwrap the floppy disk that came bundled with the package, so we've got that here. And uh, I assume the drivers and the software are included on this disk. So there we go, there we go, the mass player. And that looks like an installer tool, so we'll double click that and hopefully it'll be an automatic process and install everything we need to, uh, to drive this bit of hardware. Reading off the floppy disk here. 
I don't know, we've got an error message there. It says, can't open font. So uh, I'm guessing either the installer's broken or <laughs> that isn't an installer. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, that's a tool icon. So uh, it looks like there's no installer tool, tool bundled with it, actually, surprisingly. So there's a little note to Amiga Kit. You should uh, probably bundle an installer to make things a little bit easier for users. So let's have a look. There's a program called SnoopDOS that should be in every Amiga user's toolkit. It basically lets you see what programs are trying to access on your system. So if there's anything missing, it should tell me what it's looking for. So I've double clicked it again. It's telling me um, it's changed into that directory and launched a program. Yeah, and there we go. It's trying to access a file called fonts, mass font, and the different sizes, and that's failed. So uh, I'm hoping that's included on the disk. Yeah, there we go. There's a fonts directory. So yeah, all we need to do is copy those files to the system. So we'll do that in the shell. We'll do copy. Uh, we'll make a directory first. Make directory fonts MAS. Then we'll copy the contents of that directory. Little wildcard in so we get everything. And we'll also copy the main font file. There we go. Hoping that will work now. And there we go. And I'm assuming that sound effect that we heard there was actually played from the uh, the mass player itself. So we get some directories here. Now, uh, I've actually got a few MP3 files of different quality on this compact flashcard, so we'll pop that in. So we'll quickly jump into directory opus, and I'll just copy a few of those files over quickly uh, to the, the Amiga. Um, so we'll copy them onto the RAM disk for now. Uh, let's have a quick look what we got. Got the current Daft Punk song, I'll copy that over. Uh, we'll have that one and that one as well. Now these are all varying quality. The Daft Punk one I think is 128. Uh, this song here is 192 and this is a 320 kilobit per second. So that gives a bit of an idea of um, what it can handle and the quality of them. As I've heard that it really the, the kind of quality you want to be playing is 192 to still have, you know, a decent amount of system resources to multitask and use your computer as well as playing MP3s. So they're copied over now. We'll jump back into the mass player, check out the RAM disk. Oh, how do I go back a level, parent? There we go. So we'll try the Daft Punk song first. I guess we'll just double click them in here. There we go. That seems to be working quite well. Quality sounds really good. I said this is a 128, so we'll try 192 now, which is that one. Yeah, it appears to be working quite well. This is a 320, this one. Yeah, now as you can hear, it is breaking up a little bit. So it's struggling a bit with the 320 there. So yeah, I think 192 is about the maximum you want to go to. But um, we'll try swapping back to the Amiga's workbench. <laughs> and it's crashed the system. All right, okay, so as a, uh, as a concept, that worked quite well. Now, uh, I think that program that we loaded it up on then was probably a bit big for what we needed. So there are some other programs you can download um, that will allow you to play in programs like Amiga Amp or uh, directly from the shell that are probably a bit more lightweight than that program that I tried there. So uh, we'll try downloading a couple of those. I've got a few links actually um, from Aminet. So I'm just gonna plug my uh, Compact Flash adapter back into the Amiga. Um, and on the side there, I've got my Ethernet adapter back in, so we can quickly jump online. Um, and I made a few shortcuts actually before we started filming this video, so... We'll try downloading a few um, shell-based apps and see how that works out. Alright, so we're on the internet now. Um, I did a little edit here so you didn't have to wait for things to load up again. But we found a file here on Aminet which is called Mass MPEG Device. Uh, which looks like it's a shell-based utility, which um, should be a little bit lighter on the system and allow us to... Uh, do multitasking at the same time. And I've copied the MP3s onto my hard disk, so uh, we'll just quickly open that again. Uh, 
Right, so we've got a few shell-based commands now. I'll put links to all of these programs in my video description as well if you want to find them. Um, so by the looks of it, I think we just go to... I'm just going to check the uh, usage of it quickly. Um, so we need to copy the mass MPEG device into dev so we can do that. That's easy enough. And then um, to play a module, we use mass play. Okay, so we should have both of those in here. So we need to copy that to devs. So we'll copy that file to devs. That's copied. And then we'll try using that mass play. So uh, if we go to DH1, audio, Daft Punk song. There we go. And I can continue using my Amiga as well. And we're getting some pretty good speed out of it here, actually. So and the audio sounds pretty good. So, uh, yeah, I'm still on the internet with it, everything's working fine. Bearing in mind, this is, you know, a, a 25 megahertz machine I'm running this on here. So, yeah, it doesn't seem to impact system performance all that much at all. Then you press Control-C to stop. So, I mean, what I really bought this for is to use uh, online radio streaming and listen to podcasts and stuff. So, uh, yeah, that does seem to be working quite well. So we'll just go back and try another file quickly. That was 128 kilobit per second file. We'll try it with a 192. Yeah, as you can see, we're not getting great performance with the 192 on multitasking. Yeah, so I think, so if you're going to buy one of these, I think 128 kilobits per second seems to be the sweet spot for uh, MP3 audio. Which, you know, it's uh, it's not audio file quality by any stretch of the imagination, but it's definitely a lot more than you could do on the Amiga before. So uh, thank you for watching. I'll post um, descriptions in the video and uh, information on the hardware, where you can buy it. And uh, also my links if you want to follow me on Google Plus and Twitter will be included as well. Thank you for watching.